Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today we're going to be looking at the DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series Scarecrow figure. This Scarecrow is not the first one they've released. They made one from the new Batman Adventures before, but I personally prefer the Batman the Animated Series looks as a whole. Although Scarecrow is one of the better new Batman Adventures designs. This guy here is part of a wave that showed some upgrades to articulation and slightly taller figures, which is pretty cool in my book. So let's go ahead and check out the packaging here. As you can see, Batman the Animated Series. This is apparently the 44th figure in the line. Scarecrow. You can see him in here in the package. Here he is standing. Looks like two additional hands, totaling four. He has a Jonathan Crane head here and a sickle or scythe in the background. Nothing going up top or on this side, except for Batman Mate Series, Scarecrow, figure 44. On the bottom here, really nothing going on there either. On the back side, there is a barcode if anyone needs it, as well as a bunch of credits and simply the Batman Mate Series logo. So with no further ado, open this guy up. And I did get two of these figures, one to open and one to keep unopened. Here he is taking his rightful place with my other Batman and related figures in front of my Batman and related comics. You can see the next wave of the animated figures, this wave, and some previous animated figures above. Alright, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He does come with two additional hands, totaling four interchangeable hands. He comes with a large scythe. He also has an unmasked Jonathan Crane head, which is a pretty cool feature. Now one accessory I would have loved to have gotten with this guy would have been an, another alternate scarecrow head in Batman the Animated Series. In his first appearance he had a little bit of a different look than this, and an alternate head would have been really cool, but I'm very happy with what we got. I actually love the Jonathan Crane head, I think it's a great accessory. But before we look at the accessories, let's check out this actual figure. So based off Batman the Animated Series, creepy look and face, I love it. Scarecrow typically looks creepy, I mean Arkham Knight, Arkham Asylum, the comics, the cartoons, just looks great. I had the smaller Kenner one as a kid and I always loved that figure, it looked very similar to this. His hat here looks pretty nice, it's very soft, you can move it around, his hair is made of straw, it's kind of thin, that's typical of the animated designs. This guy does have more articulation than the previous releases, double jointed knees, looks like possibly double jointed elbows. Overall, really liking the aesthetic of this guy. He looks great. See some stitching on his pants. I'd say, so far, satisfied. And then here he is, broken down as far as he can go with all of his removable parts detached. Next, let's check out his accessories, starting with his hands. So on his first pair of hands here, here they are, fingers outstretched as relaxed as you can get this guy. Long, sort of creepy fingers. And then here's his other pair of hands. His right hand here is semi-open. It's a gripping hand for his scythe. And then his left hand is a fist. Next, let's check out his Jonathan Crane unmasked head. In the cartoon, Jonathan Crane was a college professor. He ended up doing experiments on his students. I love the way that Batman the Animated Series handled their bat villains and their origins, even the ones that they sort of tweet themselves. Here he is wearing his Jonathan Crane head. I do like the way it looks, kind of sinister, up to no good. And here I threw this Jonathan Crane head onto a scientist body. Thought it might work good for Jonathan Crane working on some experiments. And this is not the first time they've given us a Jonathan Crane head with our Scarecrow figures. There have actually been three different releases now. From left to right, we've got the DC Direct Justice Scarecrow Jonathan Crane head. Next, we've got the Mafex Batman Begins Scarecrow Jonathan Crane head. And then, of course, third, we've got the animated Jonathan Crane head. And here are all three of the figures wearing their Jonathan Crane heads. And then here's Jonathan Crane next to Ichabod Crane from Sleepy Hollow. 
Next, let's check out his scythe or sickle. This thing here, brown at the base, silver at the top, got an extra handle there. And then here is his scythe next to all the other scythes and sickles in my action figure collection. Most of these came from different scarecrow figures, some Marvel jack o' lantern figures, as well as a bunch of Fortnite skull troopers. And he can hold his weapon either with one hand, like this, or he can hold it with two hands, like so. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at his accessories, next let's check out the height of this figure. So this figure here, from bottom to top, around where the top of his head would be, it'd be about 6.0 inches. And then if you go to the top of his hat, it's about 6.5 inches, which translates to about 16 and a half centimeters. Next, let's check out this guy's articulation. So, starting with his head here, you can rotate around, no problem. You can look down just a little bit, not much, and up. It's really not articulation, it's just kind of where it's loose on the joint. Now, one thing I found very interesting about the joint, it looks like it should be hinged on the side, but I have just messed with it and messed with it, and I cannot get it free. There's like all kind of paint clumped up in there, and the bottom of this peg is starting a little bit white, so I really don't want to mess anymore. But there is articulation at the bottom, looks like it's on some kind of ball joint, can rotate around a little bit. So shoulders are on a ball joint, they go out about this far, not quite 90 degrees, a little bit disappointing there, up, down, around, all that fun stuff. So his elbow here, it looks like it's single jointed, but it's able to go in quite a bit more than 90 degrees. Almost looked like there was a separate ball joint, but it's part of the bottom part of his arm here. Of course it does have a swivel at the top, then his wrist, can rotate around. It is also hinged as well. Then he's got nothing going on in his torso here. It's one solid piece. He does have a waist swivel below that. It's not a ball joint, just a plain waist swivel. Legs go out about this far. Definitely a little bit disappointing. So there's some kind of ball joint side of there and the leg can move independently of the ball. His legs go forward about that much, not too much, and back really not at all does have double jointed knees, so pretty cool there. His foot can rotate around and looks like it doesn't go up and down, just rotates. Next let's check him out compared to his other action figures. Here he is with the rest of this wave of animated figures. Each of these four is from Batman the Animated Series and each of these four had the enhanced articulation and were just a little bit taller than the previous figures. And here he is next to the next wave of DC Collectibles Batman Animated Figures. This is the most recently released wave, just came out a few weeks ago. These are also all four from Batman the Animated Series. These here don't have the enhanced articulation and height. They were previously released before these guys and this is a re-release of these four figures. Here he is next to the previously released Scarecrow from the new Batman Adventures. Like I said before, I prefer the Batman the Animated Series designs as a whole, but Scarecrow is actually one of the ones that puts it up for debate. He's pretty creepy and looks pretty cool in the new Batman Adventures. Here he is next to all the different DC Direct and DC Collectibles Scarecrow figures that I have. From left to right, we've got the Hush Scarecrow, Justice Scarecrow, Batman the Animated Series Scarecrow, the new Batman Adventure Scarecrow, Arkham Asylum Scarecrow, and Arkham Knight Scarecrow. And now let's check them out compared with some Mattel Scarecrow figures. From left to right, we've got the DC Superhero Scarecrow, the DC Universe Classics Yellow Lantern Scarecrow, and then the DC Collectibles Batman Animated Scarecrow. Then next we've got a Mattel Movie Master Scarecrow, Another Mattel Movie Master Scarecrow in a suited body. And then the last Scarecrow there is from a Mattel 5-inch Batman Begins line. Then, here he is next to a Mafex Scarecrow figure. And here he is next to a Kenner Scarecrow figure from Legends of the Dark Knight. And then here is my entire Scarecrow action figure collection. Next, let's check him out compared with some other action figures that I use for Scarecrow Henchmen in my Batman world. Here he is next to a couple of Toy Biz Jack-O-Lantern figures. These guys are a little bit too small even for the animated figures. 
And then later, as Toy Biz was making larger Marvel Legends size figures, here he is next to three Toy Biz Jack O' Lanterns. And then recently, Hasbro made a Jack O' Lantern figure in their Marvel Legends, giving me even more Scarecrow Henchmen. And when DC Collectibles made their Scarecrow figure for the game Arkham Knight, he came with this mask accessory. I ended up getting an extra accessory off someone else who didn't want theirs. And I put him onto a couple of these Plan B Toys figures to have some Scarecrow henchmen or perhaps some people with a fear toxin. And then they started making Fortnite figures. I got these Purple Glow Skull Troopers from Jazzwares. The Jazzwares company works a little better with your DC Universe Classics or these animated figures, more of these 6 inch scale. And then Jazzwares released a black and white version of the Skull Trooper. I actually like this version better, and I'm happy to have even more Scarecrow Henchmen. And McFarland Toys was also making Fortnite figures. They also made a black and white Skull Trooper. Here is a Scarecrow with four of those. These are 7-inch scale and work better with the DC Direct and DC Collectibles Scarecrow figures. And then later, McFarland released a variant of their Skull Trooper. This here is a Green Glow Skull Trooper. This is a Walgreens exclusive. Give me even more Scarecrow henchmen. And then here is Scarecrow on his shelf. This is the home where I normally keep my Scarecrow figures. Usually I've got some henchmen in there with them. You can see some of the accessories. whole bunch of bugs here. Just in case he does his fear gas on somebody and I want to pretend like he's seeing bugs. There's a lighter that came with the Mayfix Scarecrow. A fear bomb. Some fear toxin in that canister. Another mask. Some sice in the background, a couple of gas masks back there, some more scythe, some more fear bombs, some more fear in some bags, another scarecrow mask. And here we go. These black and white jazzwares are probably my favorite henchmen for this scale figure. And here he is, next to some of the Batman the Animated Series Bat Family. And then next to the new Batman Adventures Bat Family. And here he is next to the McFarlane DC Multiverse 7 inch scale Batman the Animated Series Batman. And here he is next to all the different Bat Rogues they've released from DC Collectibles Batman the Animated Series. Not counting all the ones they've released for the new Batman Adventures. And next, let's check him out compared to some other action figure lines from different various companies to see how he fits in both scale and style wise in case you want to know if you can mix him with anything. Here he is with some of his DC Direct and DC Collectibles brothers. In front of you are five different figures made by DC Direct or DC Collectibles. Now here he is next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. And then next to some McFarlane toys. And now, next to some NECA figures. And now, next to some Mattel wrestling figures. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112th cloth soft goods action figures. And now, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here, next to some Mafex figures. Then, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. Then, with some Jazzwares figures. So overall, this is a pretty solid figure. My only complaint is, he's a little bit smaller than I would have liked. I will say, with this wave, the increased articulation and slight height increase is great as far as I'm concerned. I really love the designs from Batman the Animated Series. This Scarecrow looks great and very accurate to the source material. If I were to rate this figure, I'd give him a 7 out of 10. I think he's a nice figure. I just wish he was a little bit taller so I could use him with my DC Universe Classics or DC Direct figures. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add it to the comment section. 
If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.